guys what's up this is Don and welcome to an After Effects tutorial and today I shall be showing you some advanced keying techniques which you can use with your green screen clips so I have my clip right here I am going to drag it to the new comp button and uh, it's just a video of a lady that we filmed for one of our commercials all right, um, the first thing we need to do is to obviously get the key light plugin. So right click, go to effect, keying and key light 1.2. You can also search for the plugin on the right side here. So when you do just uh, drag and drop it to your clip. And uh, just before you go any further, note the number next to the plugin here. It says 32. And uh, that basically just represents the bit depth at which this plugin works best at. So if I go to my project settings, I can see that my color depth is matched to that 32 bits per channel. So now I know this plugin will be working at its best level. So with that done, let's uh, start keying this out. Let's go to the screen color and uh, get the eyedropper tool and select the green here. And you can see we have uh, quite a lot of noise uh, right off the bat. So let's go to the screen gain and bump that up to 110. And uh, that gets rid of uh, almost all of the noise on the outside here. Uh, but although this might look like there's no noise at all left, if you would change your view from final result to status, you can see things a little bit, a little bit clearer. The white area is basically the perfectly clear uh, perfectly keyed. The gray area means we have some transparency and the mixture of white and gray such as here, uh, over here, and also the mixture of black and gray. This basically means that uh, we have some noise and some transparency at the same time. So we need to get this key to be as white as possible and to follow the nice edges. So let's say, um, first of all, go to the screen balance. If I just go back to the final result again, you can see our hair looks a bit strange here and we lost a lot of the detail by bumping up that screen gain. So to try and get some of that detail back, we're going to lower the screen balance to about 25. And uh, we get some of the detail back, but we also brought back some of that green that was uh, originally suppressed. So what we're going to do now is to continue and uh, try to clean up these edges even more. So if we go to the screen matte settings, these are all to do with the edges. Let's uh, clip the black to 75. And uh, you can see we lost uh, quite a lot of detail there. Uh, excuse me, my bad, not 75, we want 25. 75 is way too extreme and we lose too much detail. And uh, what this basically means that any value um, which is below 25 on a scale of 1 to 100, which is basically black to white, any value before below 25 is going to get clipped to zero. Uh, the next control is the clip white. Let's set this to 75, which basically means any value um, above 75 will get clipped to 100, which is basically full white. So now if we go back to our view and set it to status, we can see we have a much better screen mat. It's not perfect, but it's uh, certainly uh, a lot better than before. Okay, um, so we obviously have uh, some noise over here and uh, this is gonna show through on our final result. So here's how I um, got around this. Instead of uh, trying to refine these settings uh, like crazy, what I did was simply duplicate the clip, go to the bottom clip and remove the key light plugin, go to the top clip and uh, change the view from final result to screen matte. And uh, with that done, I can go to the lower clip and set its track matte to be luma matte green screen clip. So now the bottom clip is using the top one as a luma mat and uh, that that gets rid of the noise problem uh, but it also presents a new one which is we obviously have a lot of green coming through 
since uh, the clip we we're actually seeing doesn't have any spill suppression uh, that was originally on the first clip. So we need to go ahead and fix this uh, spill suppression. But uh, before we do, I think we have a lot of um, edges to clean up uh, a bit more. So if we go back to this clip, this is now only just acting as a screen mat. Um, so we can uh, be a little bit more, uh, we have a little bit more freedom with the values. We can really push them uh, without worrying too much about destroying the clip below it. So let's go to the screen mat again. I'm going to put up uh, the screen softness to let's say one, or we can do the screen pre-blur, which basically blurs the key before it uh, applies the screen mat to it. And uh, that also kind of works, but I think I uh, prefer the softness control for some reason. Okay, with uh, that done, let's um, go to the shrink and uh, grow. Let's set this to minus two. And uh, again, we're just removing uh, some of those nasty edges. We can go to this other side and look at her fingers, see how that's going through. And uh, that looks great. So let's uh, bring that back to minus two. And that looks fine. Let's uh, go ahead and create a background for our project. Let's call it BG. Hit OK. And I'm going to right click this, go to effect, generate and ramp. Uh, we are going to have a radio ramp. At the top, it's going to be pretty much all white. And at the bottom, it's going to be a very dark gray. And maybe let's darken this a little bit too. And uh, we want to smoothen that out a little bit. And uh, perhaps make it even darker on there, both the gradients. So it is that uh, sort of slick, corporate, uh, clean look. Okay, so I think the key itself is pretty good. The only problem we have now is uh, this green showing through the hair. So we need to suppress that spill. Anytime you get some of the green um, on your actor's face or her hair or whatever, that's called spill. And uh, the process of elimin eliminating that is called spill suppression. So the way I did this was to go to, uh, in fact, if I named this correctly, that might help a little more. So we'll call this the screen mat. And the bottom clip, we'll just call this original clip. This is the one we're looking at. And uh, we're gonna go to right click, effect, color correction, and we want U and saturation. Let's uh, just extend this a little bit. We wanna tweak the greens. So let's go to the channel control and set this to green. And um, we basically wanna test if uh, we're in the right range here. So if we desaturate that, you can see that uh, a lot of the green disappears in the hair here. But uh, I don't think desaturating is going to cut it. I mean, if you look around, we still have that uh, nasty edge uh, with a little bit of a green tinge to it. So desaturating doesn't really help us too much. So what I find helps better is to just go ahead and change the hue uh, of this green to something closer to our actor. So since we're working with a lot of skin tones here, I'm going to push this to the left, which basically moves the hair more into the uh, red color range. And uh, I think that did a pretty good job. If we do a before and after, you can uh, see what's uh, going on. We still have a slight amount and uh, we still have quite a lot down here. And that's because the green range we are using, um, our markers here are not perfectly there. That's because greens, for some reason, tend to lie toward more, uh, toward the yellow range a bit more. So we have to grab these pointers and push them to the left side. And uh, we need to do this with uh, all the switches just a little bit. 
And as I do that, you saw that that green just all disappeared. And now we have a near perfect track to um, to work with, and we have a lot of detail preserved. And uh, this is exactly what we wanted. Okay, looking pretty good. Uh, I think we can push this one step further and um, use a light wrap. Uh, a light wrap is basically um, when your actor is standing in front of something, some of the light from behind them will be wrapped around uh, their body, basically. So we should be seeing a little bit of what's behind uh, on these edges. Because right now it's just a straight cutoff, and that doesn't uh, look very realistic at all. So what I'm going to do is to duplicate the screen mat twice, and uh, I am going to pre-compose those two, and let's go with this light wrap, and I'll hit OK, and I'll bring this both back. So we're looking at the same thing, really. These are the same. We want to go to the top one, go to Effect, Color Correction, and uh, in fact, now we want to go to Channels, and we want to invert the top one. And then the second one, we want to set that as um, the track mat for the top one. So let's uh, set that as Luma Mat Screen Mat 3, and now we have this uh, white edge going all the way around. We are going to go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and let's uh, set that to Fast Blur. And uh, it seems I have the wrong layer, so let's cut that off this layer and put it to the one above. And as I do that, you can see that I start to get an edge going all the way around. And uh, we can now use this comp as a Luma Mat for the light wrap effect. You can see it's already on over here. So I'll leave it on for now. You want to copy your background and put it above both the screen mat and the original clip and then set its track mat to be Luma Mat Light Wrap. And now uh, what this does is basically makes the background shine through or show through the edges here. As I enable it, you can see that's exactly what happens. It basically ends up blending better with our subject. You can see over here on the head it's a bit extreme, so what you might want to do is to go back to your light wrap uh, pre-composed and um, increase the blurriness and that just increases the radius of that. Um, so set it to 25 or something. Come back in here and lower the opacity of this. So if we say maybe 65, that's a little less and um, now it uh, looks really good. And uh, that's it. That does it for this tutorial. Now you know how to uh, deal with uh, noise problems. You basically need to separate your original clip with the screen mat. Don't just use one layer uh, because that gives you way more control and then you only have to worry about the edges and uh, not a lot too much about the noise itself. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I shall see you in the next video.